Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's session, Maximize Your Wealth with Three Dimensional Tax Planning Strategies. Okay, before we go to the main content, uh, just a small declaration. So all the information provided are for general information only. Before you make any decisions, please make sure you find a pro professional person to help you first. And also we're not financial planners or solicitors and uh, will not provide any financial product advice, legal advice, and any other advice that is only covered by registered financial planner or solicitor, okay? So a big question to ask everyone, do you know what's your biggest household bill? Okay, it might be your uh, interest for, um, for your mortgage or maybe power bill, okay, it's increasing very quickly. But the fact is, could be your tax bill, okay? Do you know that in Australia, um, average households uh, were paying more than a quarter, okay, one fourth of gross income as tax, okay? And then um, in terms of dollar value, that's close to $35,000 every year for a common uh, household, okay, mom and dad families. Okay, so what if you can minimize your tax and reinvest the savings um, to some investment products, okay? So uh, we actually put two uh, different scenarios here. The first one is uh, um, that's actually adapted from real clients. If the person didn't utilize any tax planning strategies, uh, so uh, the net asset can only last when the person is about 84 years old. And then the second scenario here is when we actually use combined tax planning strategies um, and uh, potentially some other investment strategies as well. Um, and then you can see that uh, even when the person is in the 90s and close to 100, the net asset is actually still taking an up, uh, upward trend. Okay, so um, he'll leave, probably leave a massive asset base um, by the time he passed away and to leave the money and assets to family members, okay? So then uh, also just a small model here, do you know that if you can save $1,000 each year, you can actually save more than $110,000 in 30 years. So if the return on investment is 8%, okay? So as you might already know, the average, um, uh, value increase for shares and uh, rental properties. Um, yeah, they're uh, roughly 8% or above. Okay, so that's the reason why we're using 8% here, but it can be better. And then also the tax saving of 1,000 is actually a conservative figure because um, uh, especially for our business clients or someone with complicated structures, uh, we're going to mention later, uh, when we help them with uh, tax-related uh, restructure, the average tax saving is roughly 20K to 30K a year. So the real uh, figure, if you are serious with tax planning, is going to be a lot more than this uh, 110K in 30 years time, right? Okay, so first of all, what is three-dimensional tax planning? So the first dimension is um, maximize deductions for each tax entity in the family group. So, Within every family group, there might be uh, companies also for business owners, or maybe family trust for people uh, with businesses or investments, okay? So you drill into each entity to make sure that you are maximizing deduction for that separate entity. And the second dimension is look across family group on the best entities to allocate income and deductions. This is because different entities might have different marginal tax rate. Okay, so uh, that's why we need to look through all of them to see what's the best way to allocate income and deductions. And third dimension is look into the future to find the best ownership structures for businesses and investments. Okay, um, that's because sometimes when you allocate different percentage, especially uh, at the beginning, when you set up the ownership structures, yeah, you know, when depend on how you um, allocate the ownership structure, it's actually deciding the future income tax and um, capital gains taxes. So, but we'll um, go into some more details, uh, yeah, um, 
each different dimension. So the first dimension will have a look. Um, okay, first thing we'll have a look at the first dimension, all the strategies. Okay, we're going to have a look at individuals first. So individuals will include um, sole traders, also uh, employees. Uh, who's only receiving salary or wages from their employers. Okay, so we only listed some examples here. We, we, we won't be able to exhaust all relative strategies, uh, strategies. So the first one is to maximize concessional contribution to super. So that's because uh, you can claim a bigger deduction outside super environment. Of course, uh, that's only when you do have surplus cash to be locked in in super until retirement or um, occasionally on compassionate ground, you can get it out, but it's going to be very hard to get super out, okay? Then other strategies are salary sacrificing FBT exempt items. So that's including electric cars, including work-related items. Yeah, uh, if you do a quick research on ATO website, you can find a list on FBT exempt items. So you can talk to your employer to try to organize uh, seller packaging, okay? And then uh, understand special deductions for your occupation. Um, some um, uh, special occupations, they might have different items you can claim. So say, for example, nurses can actually claim um, uh, non slippery shoes, uh, so that's uh, particular for, for nurses. And then uh, security guards can potentially claim um, gym expenses, yeah, because they do need uh, their body uh, fit, uh, very fit to be able to do their job. Yeah, that's just some examples. And then uh, the next one is uh, to choose a, a better method to increase deductions on home office and motor vehicle expenses. Uh, uh, this is because, say, for an example, for home office expenses, there are multiple different methods, so fixed rate method and um, actual cost method. So for our clients, we normally will get them to do both, okay, both calculations to see which one will give them a better deduction. Sometimes the difference can be up to thousands, okay? So this is very important. You need to understand both methods so that you know which one is better. And uh, motor vehicle expenses is similar. Yeah. Um, so there are two different methods, a sense per kilometer method and a logbook method. So the difference can be up to thousands of dollars as well. Yeah, if you know how to choose the best method uh, for yourself. Okay. And then also you need to check out uh, record exemptions to support expense expense deductions without receipts. So this one I noticed a lot of people don't know. Yeah. Generally speaking, if you go to a tax agent to prepare your return, they will ask you what items you can provide to them. Yeah. So it actually should be the other way around. So uh, what we do is we try to push and check with our clients and ask them multiple questions. Did you spend on this? Did you spend on that? And how you spend on them? So um, say for an example, uh, uh, if you don't know already, if you go through your bank statement, credit card transactions, provided if they meet tax office requirements, you can also use them to, um, as um, support or written evidence uh, for your deductions, okay? So if you didn't do that already, make sure you do go through your bank statement, credit card transactions, and also understand tax office requirement on, um, on what occasions and you can use them, okay? And also go through your online accounts, you know, eBay, Gumtree, um, so whatever you spend during that uh, tax year, have a look to see whether anything is tax deductible. Okay, talk to your tax agent, um, tax agents, uh, or talk to us. Okay, and then uh, next one I mentioned brainstorm. So this is uh, other possible deductions you can add. Okay, I'll give you some examples because sometimes um, there might be just one item you believe is tax tax deductible. Uh, related to that item, there might be other items. Okay, so say for an example, you might have paid um, a training um, training seminar in the city. Okay, and then uh, you would, of course, because it's work related, you can claim the cost on the training seminar. And then on top of that, um, you also need to consider for that training seminar, did you spend uh, any time to study towards it to get get prepared. And then also after, did you read any uh, related uh, material? Do you have to um, go to an exam to uh, pass their, their um, final assessment? So all that time you spent 
that could be home office, yeah, on the fixed on the fixed rate method, okay, on the hours you spend at home. And then also when you go to the training seminar, do you need to catch a train? Do you need to catch buses? Do you need to get a Uber taxi? Or do you drive there using your own car? So then they, there might be your motor vehicle expenses or uh, travel expenses, okay? So if that training, um, the location uh, of the training seminar is away from your work and home locations, that's uh, at the third uh, location, okay, far away from your home or normal permanent work locations. So that's just a typical example. So sometimes maybe related to one deduction, there might be other deductions you can claim, all right? Okay, then uh, last but not the least, uh, because we can't really list all the strategies here, the best recommendation I would give to everyone is probably use our return templates. Yeah, because we do include every single thing we can think about. Um, uh, in that um, return template and also we'll have a one-on-one -on -one session all the time every year uh, with each individual taxpayer to make sure that they don't forget anything okay so um, that's our individuals okay then uh, on the uh, businesses or, or business owners this is also on the first dimension how to maximize deductions for that business or for that um, separate entity. Okay, you need to understand difference between office meals and entertainment. So this is quite a, a typical example, yeah, because when we receive new clients, especially business clients, uh, we notice that the most of the most their previous accountants will never mention that office meals are deductible. Okay. So uh uh this is also very important because um, sometimes, of course, the first level tax office mentioned that when you um, have meals, that's actually entertainment and it's not deductible. But in tax office website, um, they actually listed uh, a few different occasions that so you need to have a look at uh, what the uh, meal is related to, where it's consumed, and, what, um, and when it is consumed. And then, so you actually have to look at uh, through the factors. And we notice that um, uh, most business owners are actually missing meal deductions, legit meal deductions, okay? So this is going to be a major tax saving if you do pick them up, okay? Business owners, very important. All right, then um, uh, explore equity exam benefits. So that's including electric cars, equity minor benefits uh, for expenses below $300. So a lot of deductions here, again, not a lot of um, taxpayers know about them. Uh, so make sure you do, say for example, if you buy an electric car using the business as an employer, you might be a director and then you can actually claim the, a full example of full deduction for the car without paying French benefit tax. Okay, and then uh, the next one is um, make sure you understand and know how to use, utilize meal allowance and travel allowance. So uh, using travel allowance as, as an example, if you um, have a business related trip, overnight trip to a different city, you can actually claim a daily rate as a deduction, okay, provided if it's not going over the tax office required threshold, daily threshold, okay? And then you can actually claim of an uh, outright deduction for every day. Um, so of course there are a lot of uh, other add-on requirements. Yeah, none of this are simple. Yeah, I'm just um, listing them here, but uh, you do need to find a very good tax accountant uh, to help you through. Yeah, so, but uh, I guess it's important for you to know that the strategies are all there uh, so that you know how to ask the right questions, okay? Then of course, um, the last thing is annual review on deductions with an experienced tax accountant. Uh, this is very important uh, on many different perspectives. One is uh, when a tax accountant understand all different industry, they will know what uh, can be typical deductions for your industry and then so that you don't miss related deductions. Second thing is uh, during that review, the accountant can also give you some other potential tax strategies and ask you questions uh, for other possible deductions you can claim. And then uh, also typically when we have our annual review, we would notice um, clients, they might be missing say one quarterly uh, water 
right, uh, water bill. And then uh, or maybe there should be 12 rental, monthly rental uh, expenses. There were only 11 and then one was accidentally paid using their private accounts. So those ones are typical examples that can be picked up by a very good accountant. And then also a review session is very important. Yeah, for our clients, we normally would have an annual review session before we wrap up their accounts so that we can find any possible uh, missing deductions. Yeah, all right. So this is very important for business owners to know. And the second dimension, uh, the strategies, I guess, um, they're more relevant to business owners or for someone who has multiple um, different entities. And then if we look at an individual, probably at least, you should look at yourself and your uh, super or self-managed super fund. Okay. So here I want to mention maximizing super contributions again. Okay, the reason being, so super contribution is actually is you, uh, related to all different dimensions. First dimension is because um, the first moment you can claim tax deduction will be outside super in your individual tax return. Okay, the second dimension, I put it here, is because in terms of shifting your income, because the second dimension is more focusing on the best entity to receive income or deductions. Inside super, when um, you allocate any income to it, the tax rate is only 10%. Okay, so that's the reason why it's very important to shift income inside super. Yeah, when you're paying 15% there and outside super, you're paying your marginal, top marginal tax rate. Okay, so that's it included in that second, second dimension strategies. And then for business owners, uh, when you are paying yourself a salary, you should try to cap your individual income to 45K, all right? So that's because uh, when your individual income is below 45K, your marginal tax rate is going to be below the tax rate of an active running company, okay, 25% for base rate company. Okay, so this is very important. Even after the uh, uh, you know state trade tax cut, um, forty five k is still going to be the turning point. Okay, above that, you're going to go above twenty five percent. Below that, it's going to be low, um, under your individual income. Okay, and then also the next one is paying dividends to individual shareholders with low income. This is actually a very important strategy uh, with business owners who's running a company structure, or if they have a corporate trustee, or uh, in a different term, we call it bucket company for family trust. Okay, because normally with a company, the tax rate is 25 to 30%. For bucket company, normally it's 30% if you only receive passive income. So when you are paying dividend to a low income earner, individual um, uh, shareholder, uh, that person could receive a tax refund on the company tax paid in previous years. That's called a franking credit. Okay, so uh, we wouldn't have enough time to explain frank franking credit here. But if you're interested, uh, do a Google research. Uh, it's similar to when uh, someone invests on uh, let's say Telstra shares, uh, when they receive the uh, dividend payout, uh, sometimes so dividend payout will be called a franked dividend with a franking credit attached. That franking credit will be used as a tax offset in the individual return. Okay, that's actually a refund or a return of previously paid company tax to the individual tax uh, shareholder. All right, so do some research and understand. So that's actually a very important tax saving strategy. Okay, and then uh, next one is uh, distribute trust profit or capital gain to low income tax earners or beneficiaries in the family group. Okay, so also um, in terms of capital gain, sometimes maybe uh, individual beneficiary would have uh, carry forward capital loss from prior years, then that person can actually use the capital loss first to offset or reduce the current year capital gain. Then you should choose that person first to allocate the capital gain. Okay, so that's actually allowed 
allow tax strategy yeah, for a family trust structure. Um, okay, and then also, of course, um, uh, on some occasions, uh, if you don't have an individual uh, beneficiary to allocate income to, to uh, cap it below 30%, that you should distribute trust profit to the bucket company, yeah, because then you can cap it uh, as uh, 30%, maximum 30%. Okay, then of course other strategies, um, you can em also employ family members uh, yeah, and then to if they don't have other income or it's one way to, you, you can um, even up your family income. So you have children, they have a holiday from uni, then they can help out with the family restaurant or family business as a cashier uh, for a couple of uh, months potentially and then you pay them a uh, salary, okay. And then, of course, uh, we can't cover everything. And every single strategy I mentioned here, uh, they're actually quite, quite complicated. Yeah, so don't try to navigate um, everything by yourself. You've got to find a good tax uh, professional to help you, OK? And then uh, next one is a third dimension strategies. OK, so um, first thing very important, and that's actually how, you know, at the very beginning of this presentation, I showed you the two comparison for different uh, strategies, you have the financial modeling. The second one is because we're, we are actually combining all different strategies together. Okay, so the, the most important um, strategy is you need to decide the best ownership structure before purchasing any investment. Okay, uh, so that's for rental properties, shares, and all other investments you're going to purchase. The reason why it's so important is because when you think about it with, um, let's use rental property as an example. It can be negative geared. Uh, if it's uh, giving you a prop, uh, uh, like uh, a loss, tax loss, you need, you might want to allocate uh, more of the loss to the high income earners in the family group, okay? If it's the other way around um, and it's giving you a tax profit, you actually want to, uh, get a low income earner to have a bigger share, okay? And then other things you got to remember is also a big, potentially the biggest bill you might need to pay on the rental property is the future capital gain, okay? Then how you're going to allocate the ownership structure is very important how much tax that's actually within the whole life of the rental property that you're holding it. It's not only upfront, it's not only year to year, you could carry forward to the next 20 or 30 years until you sell it. And then to make it more complicated, on top of that rental property, after sharing the income and losses, each individual owner might want to have other separate investment. They might receive other income, like trust income. They might have their own um, super deductions, super contributions, and then they claim deductions. So there are layers and layers of um, complications on top of your investment. So then every little change could change your marginal tax rate for one um, one part yeah, of the whole strategy. So uh, someone's marginal tax rate could be changed forever just because receiving a major share of a new investment. Okay, so this is why financial modeling on tax planning is super important. You got to do the calculation and to include all your businesses, all your investments together on top of each other and to see which is the best um, way to allocate your future income. Okay, then that's actually ownership structure. All right. And then um, the second thing I mentioned here, consider setting up a family trust with corporate beneficiary. Okay, we'll put bucket company to cap tax rate to 30% on the profit distributions. Okay, so of course, but um, uh, before you set up a family trust, you got to do the financial modeling first on two, for two main reasons. One is what I mentioned before the complication. You got to get a good tax accountant to do the calculation first to understand whether this is the best structure for you and your family group. Okay, second thing is you also want to find out the cost because they're not cheap to set up. Okay, a good family trust structure um, is not cheap to set up. You've got to um, find uh, 
a good accountant to help to set, set it up. That's including succession planning, asset protection strategies, build in the initial um, trust deed. If you don't do it, there are hidden risks that you won't be able to control in the future. Okay, that's really important. Uh, the, so the setup cost is complicated, is expensive, okay? And then also the annual accounting services uh, tax returns, they're not cheap either, okay? So what we do normally before we help someone to set up a family trust structure, we always help them to do a cost benefit analysis. So do a calculation to see how much tax roughly, let's say they can save and then uh, and then what's going to be the benefit of asset protection. Then we'll take it to the client to tell them, okay, let's say you save uh, 20K a year on uh, tax savings and then we charge $6,000, $7,000 uh, or a bit more, including tax planning, accounting, uh, tax returns and everything included would that be a good structure, okay? And then plus there will be benefits of uh, asset protection, succession planning, you know, and then they can, uh, that will help them to make a decision. So there's got to be a cost benefit analysis as well, okay? And then um, next thing I mentioned, uh, the, it could be very challenging, yeah, to, to decide before purchasing investment, which is the best ownership structure. So for that, uh, you got to find a tax accountant who can help you with the financial modeling. And financial modeling is not simple. Yeah, so, so far as I know, because uh, um, I actually built up the modeling by myself um, because I got a master of financial planning degree. Uh, I don't know whether there are other accountants who can do something similar. So far as I know, um, yeah, we we are the, uh, the only one on the market that I know who can build up financial modeling uh, like this. But uh, as you can see, it's super important. You got to do financial modeling on tax planning to understand um, how much you can save and what's going to be the value to you before you set up a structure before you purchase an investment. Okay, uh, so basically that's everything I want to mention. Uh, one last but not the least, you, you got to combine everything, you know, combine all three dimensions. Uh, uh, most of them actually hand in hand with each other. So uh, the third dimension will help you to uh, set up a direction, a little bit like a business planning to look into the future years then every year you still need to draw in the whole family group and then have a look um, how you can maximize deductions for each separate entity within that group, okay? Uh, so annual tax planning session is really important as well, okay? All right, so that's everything. And uh, here is just a pretty brief introduction about myself, uh, CPA, RTA, and then I'm also the founding member of SEPEPA, uh, Succession Asset Protection and Estate Planning Advisor. And um, I got uh, my master's degree for accounting and uh, financial planning, and also a certified zero advisor. Uh, okay, so that should be everything. If you have any questions about the three-dimensional tax planning, um, contact me anytime, send me an email, and uh, I'm looking forward to talking to you in the future to help you with uh, tax savings and maximize your deductions as well, okay, from year to year and um, uh, accumulate your future wealth. All right, thank you very much for attending this session.